Christ, that they come from that enormous lunatic asylum which we call the Red States. And you know the distinction, I suppose, is the blue, between the blue states and the red states. The red states are generally in the middle, and the blue states are, as soon as you can see the ocean, they, it's, a red, it's a blue state. That has nothing to do with the color of the oceans, but that's what we call the blue states. And there are some, when you see that the Great Lakes, there are also a few blue states, interestingly enough, the blue states seem to have to do something with water. And the weirdest thing of all, of course, is that the red states are strongly opposed against the federal government. We'll go into that later. And, but they are all subsidized by the blue states because the money is made in the blue states, not in the red states. Not all the red states are loss making, but in general the money is made in the blue states. The blue states are modern, metropolitan, uh, looking outward in a sense, and the red states are looking inward. And looking inward in a continental nation is really looking inward. But let's, let's first see, let's first have a look at the sitting president, Barack Obama, who is, in my, in my view, one of the most intelligent and pragmatic presidents that I've had for a very, very long time. Uh, probably one of the best presidents that they have had for a very long time. Um, and the strange thing is he's not popular at all. Because the Republicans will, again we'll go into that deeper later on, but the Republicans consider him a socialist, a communist, a fascist, <laughs> a totalitarian, a, a brown nephew of Adolf Hitler. Well, anything that you can think of in your weirdest dreams, the Republicans will say about Barack Obama. And in a way, maybe we should try to explain why that is the case. Um, as I said, Barack Obama was uh, uh, voted for president in November 2008 and of course started uh, being president in January 2009. And what happened in the months after January 2009, the so-called uh, Tea Party movement developed rapidly, especially in the Red States. And the Tea Party movement, where you analyze what kind of people are active in the Tea Party movement, you will see they are older, they are white, they have been Republicans mostly the whole of their lives, they were the supporters of the president before Mr. Obama, the Bush Jr., one of the worst presidents uh, in the history of the United States. Maybe not the worst, we have Final judgment is not in, but certainly one of the worst presidents. Yeah, it's it's strange in the way that that a father who was a moderately successful and normal president got a son, which is one of the most dangerous idiots in human history, <laughs> the so-called gut-feeling president, because his gut was his main area of judgment about politics. And if you go into politics, well. It depends on the party where you're active, but your gut feelings in general are not your best feelings. So maybe if you go to the PVV, if you've only got feelings, if you lost your head, that's the party, that's the party you want to have. Uh, yeah, somewhere Obama started as president January 20th, 2009, and somewhere in the following weeks, these old-style white Republican guys must suddenly have realized, God Almighty, there is a Negro in the White House. <laughs> Not a black man, a Negro. Yeah. Maybe they even thought there's a nigger in the White House. How is that possible? It's not for nothing that's called the White House. <laughs> yeah. We have been had. We have been taken there. Something Something has gone completely wrong. We, this, is, this is an impossible situation. There's only one solution. 
The only solution can be that he is not an American at all. Because if he's not an American at all, he cannot be president of the United States. So they fall up a whole mythology trying to prove that Barack Obama was not an American citizen, that he was actually born in the hills of Kenya while his grandmother was dancing around the campfire, <laughs> probably. And then, of course, uh, why did they, were they so sure that he was born in Kenya? Because, because his birth certificate from the city of Honolulu was a digital reproduction of the original birth certificate. And the original birth certificate turned up two years later, but they said, well, digital, that's, that's, that's nothing. That's not a real birth certificate. See, he was not born in Honolulu. Strangely enough, his, his uh, how do you call that, the geboorte advertentie, he come up, uh, right, the geboorte advertentie in Engels. Birth announcement. His parents placed a birth announcement in two Honolulu papers in 1962, the year that he was born. And evidently, he was born in Kenya, but his parents already knew that he would go up for President of the United States in 2008. So they thought, well, let's already place a birth announcement now. In two Honolulu, one Honolulu paper is not enough. Let's make it two Honolulu papers so that we will be completely sure that we can prove what is not true, that he was born in Honolulu. Yeah, you're laughing about it. But this has been a mainstay of political conversation on CNN, on Fox, on all these cable news uh, organizations, actually. And then they said, well, not only was this guy born in Kenya, so he can't be president of the United States, because you have to be born in the United States if you want to be president of the United States. Although John McCain was born where? In the Panama Canal Zone. Did you know that? No, but that was American territory when he was born there. So, but I, would, I, I, I was always of the opinion that, that McCain was not a real American. <laughs> not a real American. Born outside of the borders of the continental United States, you're not a real American. Maybe, maybe even Honolulu, ah, which had just become a state in '62. Hawaii had just become a state in '62. Yeah, they. Not only was this guy born in Kenya, in the hills of Kenya, about the drums, where we were drumming, or whatever they were doing, he actually lived for a few years in Jakarta as a six-year-old, seven-year-old, eight-year-old, nine-year-old boy. And what happened to him in Jakarta? He was converted into the Islam. He is a secret Muslim. Did you know that? That he's a secret Muslim. And, 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 on, and on a completely unpredictable moment, unpredictable moment, he will suddenly appear on, on mainstream television as a Muslim. On the same day, Michelle will appear in a burqa. <laughs> the girls will also appear in little burqas. And, and Barack Obama will announce that all Americans will have to turn to the Islam religion. And if they don't do so, they will be transported to concentration camps that are already built by the FEMA. Yeah. Probably you think that this is not right, that this is not true, but this was the mythology and is to some extent still the mythology of the American right. 25% actually of the American voters believe that Barack Obama was not born in the United States and is not an American citizen. And quite